empowering our movement, providing our warmth, keeping us connected. The modern world is made possible by petrochemicals. From housing to hygiene, cars to crops, INEOS provides the chemistry behind our basic human needs. World leader with the foresight and courage to take responsibility for our future. INEOS isn't the type of company that will sit back and wait to see what happens. It's the type of company that will be proactive and define its own future. If I look at the people in INEOS, they are the type of people who will rise to challenges and they will take charge of their own destiny. In 2010, European chemical industry was reeling from the effects of the financial crisis. The country faces an industrial closure reminiscent of the 80s. Energy prices were higher than ever and North Sea gas stocks were falling. Plants were closing, jobs were being lost. It's pretty unthinkable really that you would finish up closing down half your assets in Europe because they couldn't compete on the world scale. Something had to happen, otherwise you know, the consequences would have been quite dire. In the US, it was a different story. Low energy and feedstock prices had revitalized their industries. It was beginning to transform not only the US chemicals industry, but also the US economy. Shale gas was ushering in an era of unprecedented growth. In September 2011, at INEOS headquarters in Switzerland, a plan was devised to seize the initiative and bring that US advantage to Europe. A fleet of ships would create a virtual transatlantic pipeline to supply INEOS's European businesses with the US gas they desperately needed. A team of international partners was assembled. The only problem? No one had attempted anything on this scale before. The idea at first could sound crazy. It was quite a, a gamble from Ineos's point of view. Getting the gas from the shale wells in West Pennsylvania to a terminal in Philadelphia was the first hurdle. There were no facilities to get the gases offshore. The infrastructure in the northeast of the states simply didn't exist. And so a deal was struck with oil company Sunoco to pipe the gas contracts with range resources to provide the gas and Mark West to process it quickly followed. But there was still the matter of a deep blue obstacle to cross. Crossing the Atlantic Ocean is a huge challenge. INEOS needed a partner who was up to that challenge and understood their ambition. In January 2013, INEOS agreed a deal with Danish shipping company Evergas. They're an innovative group and we needed some innovative thinkers. They were looking to design new vessels to the specification to optimise this project. So we teamed up with Evergas to design a vessel which could solve the engineering problems of transporting extremely cold liquids across the Atlantic, but do that economically. Evergas put forward the idea of a boat redesigned from the keel upward to meet the demands of this unique project. HSVA in Hamburg were the hull design specialists employed to maximise the efficiency of these immense new ships. Over in Spain, Vartzilla were developing a new engine running entirely on ethane. This world first would mean cleaner emissions and more room for cargo. The designs were now complete, but they needed a new classification. The name given to them? Dragon Class. All that was left to do now was build the ships. Sino-Pacific Offshore and Engineering, with the company in China chosen to construct the Dragons. One of the biggest shipbuilders in the world, they were the obvious choice for a project of this scale. The sheer scale and complexity of building these ships is really something that was only available to us in China. The ship's tanks would be the largest ever built for this purpose, carrying a total of 27,000 cubic meters of supercooled liquid ethane. 
At Dayang Shipyard, the hulls were being constructed in a block format. Gigantic chunks of the vessel, weighing up to 700 tons each, were lowered into a dry dock and fitted together, all within two millimeters accurate of each other. Following the insertion of the giant tanks, the first ships were almost finished. But the project had been upscaled. Due to increased demand, the order had grown from four ships to eight ships. By this stage, each ship had 5,000 people working on it and were taking almost two million man hours to complete. The deadline for the completion of the ships was critical. Cargoes of gas were due for collection in October 2015. A project five years in the making, spanning three continents, involving tens of thousands of people. A project to secure the future of INEOS's European businesses is now nearing completion. It'll transform our European chemicals business and it'll give us a great competitive edge. We can continue to invest in those chemical facilities in Europe because they'll become more profitable and more successful. At an event attended by dignitaries from around China and the world, the first two ships were officially named by Alessia Maresca and Dawn Curry. JS Ineos Ingenuity and JS Ineos Insight will soon set sail to pick up their first cargo. These are really, really beautiful ships, really fantastic. Without these vessels and the gas that uh, comes across, there wouldn't be a petrochemical plant at Grange Mass, so it's, it's everything. Not often in our industry you get a really revolutionary moment, and this is one of them, and to have lived through it is quite something. As a new era of gas transportation begins, these dragons look set to breathe new life into the European chemicals industry. Many people have said it can't be done, what we're doing, but we're doing it. <laughs>